This is our biggest show by far. You know, just the 16 man bracket's gonna be crazy. What Combat Jiu Jitsu provides is, again, in my opinion, the best part of the UFC. The Jiu Jitsu with the strikes. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't think it was the most entertaining form of combat, in my opinion, because I'm such a Jiu Jitsu freak. And, you know, not everybody's like me. Some people don't like combat Jiu Jitsu. They would rather, you know, I'll just stick to UFC. That's fine. UFC's the, the greatest. This sport is for Jiu Jitsu nerds. They just want to see the Jiu Jitsu part of MMA, and that's what it is. We just took that out. We eliminated the wrestling. You could wrestle a little bit if you want, but it's very limited wrestling and zero striking standing. So we get we, we bring you down after a minute. You get down and you fight on the ground. You try to submit each other or beat each other up with the palms. Craig Jones is one of the best grapplers in the world in the sub-only game. Um, he hasn't done any MMA. He's making uh, his mark in the sub-only jiu-jitsu world. I asked him if he wanted to fight, uh, who he'd want to fight in combat jiu-jitsu worlds, and Craig suggested Donald Cerrone because they had like a little thing going at uh, um, during the Ultimate Fighter. While we were filming the Ultimate Fighter, I ran into him at the PI and he was asking about training, so uh, we brought him into train with the guys. Me and Donald rolled with each other. I remember asking him how hard he wants to roll because he had to fight in four days, and he's like, the fight's four days away, I can go 100%. Obviously, I didn't go 100% with him, but we, we definitely put a pace on. I remember being impressed with his guard retention. Uh, during the roll, at one point, he injured his ribs, which was unfortunate for him going into that fight. And then after we trained, he was joking around. He's like, I'm going to call you out for submission on the ground. So since he said that, I was like, let's do it, man. I've been trying to, trying to make it happen, trying to make it happen submission on the ground. Uh, Chael couldn't get it done, but Eddie Bravo could get it done with some slaps. Uh, Eddie Bravo called me, wants me to take a super fight against, hands down, the baddest jiu-jitsu artist around right now. I mean, dude's sick. But it's combat jiu-jitsu, so there's palm striking. It's wrestling until you hit the ground, then it's palm striking and jiu-jitsu, which will be fun. Hopefully uh, I can negate him from a heel hook by palm striking in the face, I don't know. Me and Jafar were talking about that today, like do we put on weight for this or do we not? What do we do? But it'd be hard to put on weight just to take it back off, so I'm not sure what we're gonna do on that aspect of it. I think I just walk in and fight him at whatever I am, I don't care. I'm excited to go in there and roll with the best. So it's fun to get something fired up and then use all that fired up energy and run it right into a fight. I'll be in shape, ready to rock. It's hard to find somebody to emulate his style. He's one of the best, if not hands down, the best, especially leg lock. And his rear naked game is very impressive. You see, I can't even yeah, take it. Even. Woo -hoo. So when you're, when you're here, you're little McKiss, so you have a nice Yeah. Going and competing with one of the best there is, for me, that's unbelievable, you know? It's like, you know, why not? I think he might be super underestimated in my wrestling, especially open mat wrestling. I don't know, he's just different, changing it up. And at this level, there's no shortcut. So my last fights, I take shortcuts, and you see it just hasn't ended well. And um, I got an age of maturity in my training that I know that what I have to do and what it takes to be the cowboy that everyone wants to see fight. Cancun, December 19th. He's good. He's very good. Well, he's sitting there telling his friends, Cowboy's good too. Pure UFC fighters going into the sub-only world, uh, most of the time, 95% of the time, they just can't hang with the pure jiu-jitsu guys because that's all the jiu-jitsu guys do is jiu-jitsu all day. MMA fighters, they gotta spend a lot of time on striking and wrestling and, and not so much submission. So uh, it's very hard for a UFC fighter, no matter how huge they are, no matter if they're Hall of Famers, no matter how much experience they've had in the octagon, Going head to head with arguably the best submission only grappler in the world, Craig Jones. I mean, that's, if it was a sub only match, it, on paper, it's a, it's a mismatch. And it, it probably, probably would end very quickly with a leg lock. Um, but they're meeting in the middle, you know, combat jiu jitsu. It gives the UFC fighter, and in this case, Donald Cerrone, 
you know, more of a chance. That makes it very interesting, because if it was pure jujitsu, it wouldn't be as interesting. So who knows, maybe Donald Cerrone could smack the crap out of Craig Jones, who knows? Anything could happen. Yeah, he has a really good guard, dangerous from his back. And that's how you get most submissions. It's not when you're sitting there for a while playing guard, it's on the way to the ground. It is entertaining to watch the guys slapping each other. Some guys go out there, don't slap each other, just do a regular jiu-jitsu match. Some guys get too eager to slap the other guy and they get submitted quite easily. Some guys have such a, a sport jiu-jitsu game that they think they're going to be able to negate the slaps and just get the shit slapped out of them. My game plan will probably change a bit, obviously. Cowboys got some heavy hands, don't want to be on bottom there eating some slaps. Competed two times in EBI previously. EBI 11, 170 pound tournament. But that was a great time. Um, from there, I got invited back for EBI 14. After that point, I'd already had a big splash at ADCC, so I was sort of, I was going in, I was a bit more of a favorite into that tournament than the previous one. First round, I had Andy Burke, Dean Lister Black Belt, who had talked a bit of smack before the event about how he wasn't worried about heel hooks because, um, He's a Dean Lister black belt, and I was able to heal him in, I think, 12 seconds to set the record. Second round, Marcel Goncalves, Wagner Hosha training partner. Um, I was able to face off against him. I was able to get the heel hook in 90 seconds. Third round, Tex Johnson. I believe I was able to get the heel hook against Tex Johnson in 60 seconds. In the final, I had a uh, match against Gordon Ryan. Obviously, I got to the finals in about three minutes. Gordon took a, a fair bit longer to get there, so going in, he was pretty gassed. Um, we had a bit of a scrap in the regulation period, overtime period. We both escaped each other's submissions, uh, positions in the first round. Second round, I put him in an armbar, cranked his arm real bad, real famous moment, uh, but he was able to get out and then strangled me in the second down of the second round of overtime. Uh, yeah, great experience, both of those. Second one, even losing, probably uh, got me a lot of buzz and a lot of popularity after that just because it was such a, such a great event. The only striking I did was when I first started jiu-jitsu, probably going back 13, 14, 15 years ago, uh, I would go to a gym to train, but we wouldn't really do anything technical. For the most part, we would, uh, I guess, super high before the training session, and then we'd just try to knock each other out. Um, and that's basically the extent of my striking. I think I did that for two or three years. I was thinking about pursuing MMA, but MMA was still illegal in Australia at the time. So from there on, I really just got hooked on jiu-jitsu because I had a, had a path to uh, compete in that rule set. And not just sit down in open space, you need to at least pull a close guard or pull a half guard position. So you need to decrease the range at which your opponent can hit you from. When you're basically head to chest or head to head in a bottom position, they're not really gonna slap you too hard, but if you pull and try to play De La Hebra or something, you're gonna get the shit slapped out of you. Obviously, much superior athletes in MMA than Jiu-Jitsu, just given the paychecks these guys make. So obviously, he, I would say he's a superior athlete to me, but given that I've only dedicated myself to one aspect of combat sports, uh, I should win this match. You're gonna see me aggressively going after the finish because I do respect Cowboy's armbar game in overtime. Uh, I do not want it to go the full 10 minutes and have to uh, escape a bad position on Cowboy. I'm gonna come forward, I'm gonna wrestle, I'm gonna put him down, slap him around a bit, and I would expect to take the back and finish him from the back um, before regulation ends. Sub-only stars that you never thought would do combat jiu-jitsu, now they wanna do it. They want a UFC fighter. They're like, give me a UFC fighter, you know? And uh, I'm not gonna name any names. And UFC fighters, they wanna jump in too. They feel like, oh, now we have a shot. You know, if we could throw some strikes, the odds, are shifted a little more in the MMA fighter's favor. I'm Jordan Holly. I'm a black belt under Rodrigo Cabral, representing the Brazilian Fight Factory in Holy Grail Jiu-Jitsu. Um, as far as my accomplishments in Jiu-Jitsu and in, uh, in life in general, um, I've been third coach champion at 145 pounds and 155 pounds. Um, I've competed in most sub orientations as you've seen. I'm a Shugyo veteran and um, uh, two-time EBI competitor in CJJ last year. Um, my, one of my biggest accomplishments is marrying my wife, Alana, who's my constant companion. And without her, I, c I couldn't do anything. She cooks all my food and does everything for me. Um, another thing I'm very um, proud of and grateful for is owning my own business here in Victoria, my gym, The Holy Grail. It's always been a dream of mine to, uh, to own my own gym and to be able to work for myself. So. 
So my day typically starts out at about 3.30, 4 a.m. I'll read my Bible, putting God first. It's always been paramount in my life. Um, after that, I'll usually chart a little bit of crypto um, and kind of get ready to trade for the day. Um, my wife will wake up and then we'll do the 6 a.m. class here at my gym. Uh, if it's Monday, Wednesday, or Fridays. Otherwise, we'll head to the gym, uh, Pure Fitness here in town, and either do a circuit or do some cardio. Um, once that once that's done, we'll go home and make breakfast. Alana typically goes to work, she's a full-time nurse. And then I'll spend my day either uh, reading theology, playing Call of Duty, uh, streaming it online on Twitch, or, um, or, or studying jiu-jitsu DVDs just to keep my time busy until uh, the afternoon classes where I'll either teach the kids class um, and then the beginners class and then uh, our advanced classes at seven. Uh, after that, we come home, make dinner, and then um, go to sleep and do it all over again the next day. Um, as far as the difference between preparation for a tournament style format and uh, a single match type format, I don't see much difference between it. I think you should be prepared, fully prepared for both of them as far as cardio and everything goes. Um, typically tournaments are a little bit harder because you don't know how many people you're going to have to face. God willing, you'll, you'll beat everybody and you'll face like four or five people. Um, so you definitely have to be conditioned for that. But it, I think more uh, about the uh, rule set that we're in than anything. So if it's EBI OT, then I'll make sure that I tailor the class to where we do more OT rounds and structured in. And uh, if it's more like uh, there's points, then we'll do positional style things. Or if some other rule set comes up, we'll try to uh, really focus and work on those things in the weeks leading up to the tournament that we're focusing on. Back right when COVID was starting in 2020, was uh, I was a little bit more nervous, especially because Eddie in the in the pre-match thing was saying that hey, you get knocked out if you play half guard, and I was like, oh man. At the time, that was my favorite card, so uh, I was very nervous going into it initially. But once once I'd done it, it was it was very much just what I always do, which is jiu-jitsu, and with with a few strikes, a few bumps that you normally get in in training. So I don't think that it's um I don't think that it's something scary to be worried about. I think that if you do jiu-jitsu, you roll hard all the time that um, you're more than well equipped to deal with a few strikes. He just barely reaches through, and he's going to try to squeeze through him. Got the tap. That's a wrap. Jordan Holly on his way to the semifinals. My style of jiu-jitsu, I, I, I guess I would describe it. I guess most people would describe me as a leg locker, and I do I do, do a lot of leg locks, but um, I, I can play anywhere. I'm really strong at passing and, and top heavy. Um, I, I, I like a good uh, defensive wrestling, and I think that um, I can take the fight literally wherever it goes, and I feel comfortable there. In this style of the rule set, I, I tend to focus more on staying on top just in case someone decides to throw strikes. I would like to be the person that dictates where and when those strikes come from, and if someone throws strikes, I'd like to be the one throwing with the power. So um, typically in a CJ style rule set, I think that uh, it'd be better to stay on top, but it's not necessarily a bad thing to be on bottom. Um, when you throw strikes, you open yourself up to be countered for other things. There's been less striking in my matches as far as CJ goes. Um, outside of EBI, outside of CJJ rather, and just EBI rule sets, I've competed quite a bit in those rule sets. And I do typically really well. Um, uh, I've had uh, problems in OT. Many times I've lost in OT with the uh, escape times. But other than that, I've, I've really solidified that chink in my armor and uh, I'm excited to compete again. Uh, you can expect at CJJ, the featherweights, to see me coming forward, attacking with strikes, attacking with leg locks, attacking with guard passing, always going forward and pressing the action. I uh, won't be stalling or, or, or retreating at, at any point. So you can expect an exciting match and you won't want to miss this. Ben Eddie in the house! Oh shit! Yeah, I'm Ben Eddie. Um, I've been training Jiu Jitsu for like 12 years now, 10th Planet Black Belt. I represent 10th Planet. Um, we're here to do the 10th Planet Trials. In 145 combat jiu jitsu. So I've been wanting that 45 really hard, the position, the 45 spot, you know? I still don't have it because Keith has it, so I still have to win better than Keith. Uh, but I've been wanting in 45 for a long time because 135 is a really hard cut for me. 135.2. Uh, I'm really good at like being really specific with my diet, being calm, being okay with that energy before the competition and doing that, you know. Um, but it's, it's hard on me. Literally when I jog over to compete at 135, when I jog from the starting over, I'm like, that's like a drag on my legs. Like I'm tired, you know. I'm not totally recovered any of those times, you know. Whereas 145, I can feel good at 145. But these 10 final trials are hard, especially for me, because everyone knows rubber guard here, you know? If I can rubber guard these guys, like, that's a big thing. I can rubber guard the 10th final guys, so that's a big deal. These trials are my hardest thing to get through. Um, but 
I do good in the regular combat shoots because then they don't know what's happening. So I like it when I'm back in that. You know what he wants to do, and he goes out there and does it. You can't stop him. It's crazy. Like the most dangerous position in this tournament is Ben Eddy flat on his back. That's that almost like violates the rules of combat. Right. But th nobody can stop him. Who stops him? He beats everybody from this position. I'm blown away. There's a tap and he's done. Ben Eddy, clinical with his precision. Yeah, the strikes open things up. Uh, their anxiety opens things up. I see people are super anxious. Uh, they lose all their calm. And in Jiu Jitsu, that's like the biggest thing is having your calm, having your breath, not having your tension. Um, anxiety can make anyone a white belt. You know? And I look at that and I see that as like, uh, okay. There's like, there's a hole there that like, I can feel. You know, I feel good. I feel, I feel fine finding my calm and my breath during matches, you know? So that's an edge I have. Um, whereas in regular Jiu Jitsu, people are stay pretty calm. That's, they're pretty professional there. Squeeze me like 30%. I'm just gonna wait until it's like a blood choke so it goes in. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I should have gone a little earlier, but that's how it goes. Just see if I can get some fight up. Yeah. Right. This is a smaller showing today, so I only had a couple matches. But um, I still had to get Isaac's final. You know? So that's a good one. And uh, I still got it done. And so I'm happy that like I finally got one of these trials. Good position now. Again, Flores still trying to roll through it. Now Lopez coming alive, ground and pound. And I started in Jiu-Jitsu at 5 years My father was a negra de Jiu-Jitsu and my family is a negra de Jiu-Jitsu. So from there, I started. I have several titles. I think the things I can highlight in this moment Este son es un segundo lugar en la DCC Trials en Brasil, este y el el cinturón de combate de Jiu-Jitsu México. Yo una vez tuve una una competencia con la regla de VI, pues la verdad llegué hasta la final, no me fue muy bien ya en los detalles, pues no conocía mucho las reglas, pero bueno, fue pasando los años, me fui adaptando y pues bueno. Este, me adapté muy bien a las reglas y por, por eso soy campeón de combate de Jiu-Jitsu México. He's super conscious of the Dars, and we know that Diego's got one. He's thinking about now. He's got it. He's going to slide in that Mars again. He's saving a little bit. He's not saving. He's not saving. Diego Lopez. No, pues mi estado mental yo, yo creo que es el más tranquilo posible, ¿no? Nada más, pues hay un poquito de nervios, pero bueno, yo creo que ya cuando estamos ahí, a partir del momento que chocamos las manos, pues todo cambia. That's what I like about the feeling out process. You really get to learn uh, about these athletes throughout the entire tournament of what their jiu-jitsu game is. And right now, Flora is trying to take the match to the floor, and he gets in. Oh, he's in the double. Oh, wow. Oh, hard. Man, a hard right hand from Lopez. It knocked Flores backwards. And now he's got the outside. Look, this could be 
be trouble for Diego Lopez. We'll see if he can take the back with this. That's how Flores ended up on the back in his match. Ended up going to the back to the back. Este, pues la, la diferencia es que, pues bueno, ocupa estar luchando más seguido y pues queriendo no tener compañeros que estén dispuestos a ayudarte, ¿no? Este, yo creo que esa es la diferencia, ¿no? Porque eh, este, para una pelea de MMA nosotros nos enfocamos de hacer una sola cosa, ¿no? Porque solo es un contrincante. Ya en un torneo es diferente, nunca sabes con qué te va a topar adelante, ¿no? Este, a lo mejor entrena para una sola persona, pero bueno, la siguiente ronda te toca algo completamente diferente. Para las personas que hacen puro jiu-jitsu se cambia porque no estoy acostumbrado a recibir golpes, ¿no? Y ya nosotros que somos peleadores de MMA estamos acostumbrados con eso diario. Creo que es un poco molesto que alguien te esté cacheteando, ¿no? Este es diferente de MMA. En MMA sabemos que te vamos a pegar con un puño cerrado, entonces siempre estás preparado para eso, ¿no? Y ya cuando te están este, cacheteando es diferente, ¿no? Pues no espera que te van a cachetear, aún más cuando estás luchando jiu-jitsu. Lopez just eating these shots, smiling and giving one back. Mi rutina diaria, pues, como ves, de, de, está en gimnasio todos los días. Me gusta estar acá. Este, tengo mi equipo, tengo que estar entrenando a ellos. También tengo que estar entrenando. Entonces, mi rutina diaria se divide en hacer mi entrenamiento de MMA, mi entrenamiento de jiu-jitsu. Y, pues, bueno, ahora en este caso, este es el entrenamiento de combate de jiu-jitsu, ¿no? que me estoy en el jiu-jitsu es, es salir siempre para adelante buscando la sumisión, ¿no? Este, he tenido muchas malas experiencias cuando, cuando son estas reglas y, y la decisión va a los referees o por el overtime, entonces, bueno, yo procuro siempre no llegar a ese punto. En este championship bout of combat jiu-jitsu Mexico, nice right hands by Lopez, now coming alive again. No va a beneficiar, pero yo creo que puede ser una, puede ser, puede ser clave para que pueda ganar el torneo. Ahí cuando vi que anunciaron el 145 libras, pues bueno, tenía la esperanza de que me evitara y pues afortunadamente fui evitado y pues bueno, contento, contento por eso. Trying to make the adjustment. He hasn't quit yet. That's a wrap. It is done. Combat Jiu-Jitsu Mexico has a lightweight king. His name is Diego Lopez. Pues yo siempre voy a estar para adelante buscando finalizar todas mis peleas y pues bueno, salir con el sitio y con el premio efectivo. My name is Zach Schneider. Uh, I'm a brown belt and I represent Warrior Camp and also Drysdale Jiu-Jitsu. My typical daily routine, I, I wake up in the morning, I get to see my daughter for a little bit uh, before I have to go to work. I'm a K-6 PE teacher, so I just go and I, I teach kids PE, I, I coach, kickball, all that good stuff. Uh, after that I come home, able to see uh, my wife and daughter a little bit, then I can go to training. Um, preparing for this, I've also been able to, uh, on the same campus as where I work, started to lift at the high school, incorporated that into my training, trying to fill out moving up from 35 to 45 here. Uh, focus on just the task at hand, thinking about these are the things that are going to win me the match, these are the things I can't allow to happen, and uh, this is how I want to do it. So you go in with a plan and you try to execute the best you can. Um, in a tournament, you might have a little less of that dialed down for each specific opponent just because there's so many different opponents and uh, they're coming with so many different angles on their own day. So my, my mindset's really gonna be to, to try to be light. The EBI rules has, has been great for uh, you know getting out of deep finishes and also it's made me really refine and look at uh, some of my own finishing mechanics, some of the things that I go for against someone else um, who also knows essentially what I'm going for and knows uh, how to defend the best ways to, to try to get out in the escape route. So I feel like that EBI specific overtime training is just really quickly leveling up both the spider web game and uh, the back game, both attack and, uh, and escape. Originally I didn't think palm strikes would be that big of a deal. Especially at 135, I was like, man, none of these 135ers are gonna hit me hard enough that it's gonna like really change my jujitsu, you know? Like maybe it'll hurt. And then I got my nose just blasted and I'm bleeding all over the place. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I was wrong about that. Maybe these palm strikes are a little bit more of a big thing here. You really can't, can't be that relaxed. You really can't allow the other person to uh, dominate the top position, you know? 
Ben Eddy uses the rubber guard really well to take bottom position but then control posture. Thinking about passing guard, you know, there's a little less work in those intermediate positions. You kind of want to be all in with your, your hands clasped in some way to be able to kill that space or far enough out that you can play an outside passing game. Thinking about all those things as well as thinking about the other guys in the bracket and how they're going to uh, use strategy and, and how the strategy would change in combat jiu-jitsu compared to, compared to regular jiu-jitsu. You have to be ready to push. You know, you might be grappling an hour. If you're going to OT consistently, you might have a long night. So you either have to be tight on your finishes or deep in your cardio, and really, you probably got to be bored. My style of jujitsu is is an athletic, high pace, um, guard passes and, and leg locks combined, you know, fight for the guard pass, drop back for something when they uh, over defend. I've got a mean guard and a lot of flexibility uh, and it's hard for people to deal with a lot of times, hard to get past, so it's hard to put me in a bad position. Um, and I just like to, uh, I like to try to have fun, I like to try to have scrambles, I like to try to find things in the scrambles. Um, especially Nogi, I think that's the, that's the best part about Nogi. I love my car wheels, I love my backflips, I love my, my spinning passes, I love my Iminari rolls. I want to try everything and I want to see how it goes in the, in the combat stage. Um, I know that there's some other guys in this card that are favored and I want to go out there, risk it all, and try to get my name up. My name is Kim Terra. I'm a third degree black belt and I represent my brother, Caio Terra. I train and teach Jiu Jitsu all day, every day. I've been doing that for as long as I can remember. You know, I started training when I was a teenager. I only started because I wanted to beat my brother. When that uh, proved to be too hard, I moved on to easier goals like maybe winning world championships, stuff like that. Last year I competed at the Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds as a lightweight. It was a wonderful experience, I have no complaints, just I felt like the guys were a little bit too big compared to me. So I told Eddie right away I wanted to be back as a featherweight and here I am now, ready to go. I didn't change anything in my preparation. You know, the, the rule set, the COVID thing didn't affect me. My mindset is always the same. I'm a competitor. I do whatever it takes to win. I hate to lose. I think uh, my style of Jiu Jitsu fits very well in this tournament. I like to wrestle. I like to be on top. You know, adding palm strikes makes it more exciting. A little bit scary, but you know, it is what it is. To me, it's always an honor being invited to compete, you know, especially overseas. I love to travel, I love to fight. This is, there's no other life I would rather have, nothing else I'd rather do. You can expect to see the best version of me this time. I'm motivated, I'm hungry, I'm ready. Let's do this. Can't see me, can't see me. What's up guys, you know who it is. It's Gabriel Austin Daffron representing Kindra Jiu Jitsu. I'm back at it again. There's a straight ankle lock. Ooh, counter. And we see the ground and pound offense here finding a home for Daffron. Frame against the face. Now he delivers some serious strikes here.
People are asking me, how have I changed my training since the last Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds in March? We've really gone all out for this one. I feel like uh, we're really like revolutionizing the sport here. We're adding modern day tactics and techniques specific to Combat Jiu-Jitsu. It just really hasn't been done to the level that we're doing it. We're practically specializing our Jiu-Jitsu gym in combat Jiu-Jitsu. One forty-five featherweight. I feel great. I'm gonna come in there with a fat tummy. Get uh, push the pace against these bigger guys. Get to beat big dudes. So I'm into that. And um, if Eddie ever had a flyweight division, 125, I'd be interested in beating small guys too. So I'm really just all over the place. Anywhere from 125 to 145, uh, you know, throw me in. But uh, my preferred division is definitely probably 145 because I don't have to worry about the weight class. <laughs> Why do I believe I have what it takes to be the next combat jiu-jitsu champion? Simple. I have the one inch tiger palm strike. Probably won't use it just for the good of humanity, but someone fucking tries me. It's there. Remember that. One inch. Hus! Gone. Take five steps. Done. Keep that in my back pocket. Hopefully I don't have to use it, guys. Just don't try me. another right hand. I think I bring a skill set into this sport that's very uncommon among its participants. I think that's hard to deal with and hard to figure out. And uh, the particular skill set that I have is dangerous and people know that. I think the people have started to be concerned about fighting me in this sport. I think that's only gonna continue and get worse, to be totally honest. Landing some hard right hands here. And look how he drives with the heel of the right hand. Oh, He's opened him up. Definitely blooded and battered. That's a wrap. David Weintraub getting it. In a fighting a turn that you have to be well conditioned, that you need to be able to recover and go again. You need to be efficient during your matches and uh, conscious of how much energy you're using and when you're wasting energy versus using it efficiently. For the most part, it's very similar to training for just one fight in the sense that the better you come through that fight, the better off you are going into the next one. It's, uh, if anything, the biggest changes are in strategy. I recently moved to Pennsylvania in order to train at the Finishers MMA headquarters. It's made some big improvements in my training. I'm training more often, and I have high-level people around me all the time. It's been a great experience so far, and things keep getting better. Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds is my favorite place to compete. It's my favorite sport, uh, and it is the promotion where I've been treated the best as an athlete. The format of the competition or the rule set that I'm participating in definitely has an impact on my mindset going into it, on my approach to fighting, on, on a lot of different psychological and cognitive elements of the fight. I try to obey the physical principles which govern fighting, all fighting. And as long as I stick to that, that creativity can come through in an infinite number of ways. Hi, I'm Chris Sunshine Lencioni, and this is what I do for training for Combat Worlds. 
Uh, a typical day for me, uh, yeah, I have a newborn, so I take care of him, and then I'm training in the morning, dad stuff, coaching, dad stuff, training, coaching, dad stuff, sleep. So yeah, full-time, full-time business, full-time dad. June 28th, my son was born, and I thought I had a pretty good handle on full-time training, being a husband, and running a business. Uh, but then when I had my son, it was a, that changed everything. Now I have to micromanage every second of my day to maximize my training and him not cry. <laughs> Yeah, I went 8-0 as an amateur in MMA. Eight fights in 10 months, something like that. Got into Bellator in a year of being a pro. Uh, took a lot of like high-level uh, professional jiu-jitsu matches, and most recently I beat Kevin Lee in a grappling match, escaping by time. And then I beat uh, AJ Agazar, he was a, like an ADCC silver medalist, multiple time high-level black belt. Um, and all these things I did just recently get my brown belt. I mean, it's really, it's pretty close to MMA, so the last one I did was really good. I got caught in what they call crackhead control, um, so it's kind of a stall out, but overall, I mean, when you're on top of somebody in a fight, you're going to be able to slam them, you're going to be able to do lots of stuff, so it's a balance. It's a pretty good balance. I train all the time to be ready for a fight on short notice, so I'm used to endurance rounds, lots of long rounds, getting yourself to the point where you just like can't think, and then how do you react? Yeah, it changes all of them. I think with this combat stuff, the adrenaline just doesn't get going until someone slaps me hard, so I'm looking forward to that. It'll be a lot different than a fight. I, uh, I like to think I'm more of a scrambler with jiu-jitsu. I love that element of like reactionary, you know, boom, I touch you, you, you do this or that. And I come from MMA, so I do things that I think are a little more self-defense oriented as opposed to people that do sports jiu-jitsu. But if you've been elbowed and kneed in the face or kicked in the face by like world champion kickboxers, you think about a slap and you go, oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> I just think it's really fun that some people aren't used to getting hit in the face and you, you see that come out, especially in like black belts. And I feel like if you have a black belt, you should know how to use the wall and you should know how to escape certain situations. You should definitely be getting hit in the face. And if you're not, that's kind of strange. Yeah, I'm just pretty well-rounded. I've been doing this for a solid minute, definitely not as long as other people, but I think the way I look at it is very creative and uh, takes a lot to upset me, so I'm really able to stay focused in every match. <laughs> Lots of slaps, what do you think, man? I'm gonna take people down, I'm gonna slap them, I'm gonna choke them out, that's it. <laughs> My name is David Acuna. I train at California Mixed Martial Arts in Gardena. I started martial arts to occupy my free time. I also watched a lot of martial arts on TV as a child, and it always inspired me to learn how to do the things they're doing. Even like when it comes down to like Dragon Ball Z and other uh, anime cartoons I used to watch, I would like to try to attempt to be as close to their ability as possible. So I started doing jujitsu and MMA, so that way I could learn how to fight like Goku and Spider-Man basically. So my daily routine, I get here around 8 a.m. I train until 12.55, and I hop in the shower, go straight to work, I clock in at 1.30, I work for about six hours, then I go back to the gym after and work out for about two more hours for nighttime training. So for a tournament, I have to be ready to um, be able to stay in a fire and embrace the grind. I'm gonna be tired a lot, I'm gonna be fatigued a lot, I'm gonna have to come out on top and still have that championship mindset throughout every position, every match. I wanna beat myself. I wanna be the best version of me. So there is no opponent, I am the opponent. I just wanna beat myself, I wanna beat my mentality. I wanna beat my own mental blocks. I wanna just perform the way I train to perform, basically. I wanna show, showcase my talents and I also wanna test myself to see how I perform under the light and under the, the intense pressure. Every encounter, every exchange, every position, I need to figure out how to take advantage of it and capitalize and institute my game plan. 
I just need to work hard. No matter what the what the rule set is, I've done kickboxing, I've done MMA, I've done jujitsu, I've done cash wrestling. It's all the same. It's all about being focused, being determined, trying your best, and um, not breaking when, it, when you face adversity. That benefits me a lot to be able to control positions, hold people there, and when I'm holding there, I can smack and strike to set up my next move. If you're in a spot where you're just hanging out, when the strikes start involving, it forces you to be more realistic with the positioning and work harder, work to protect yourself, work to uh, advance because you don't want to sit there and get beaten up. And also it helps you beat someone up to set up your submissions as well. I learned a lot after training. I learned what, what's safe and what's not safe. I learned that um, it is a total fight. It's totally a fight. It's a, it's a, real, it's a real deal. So um, you can't go in there thinking you're just doing jujitsu or you're just doing striking. It's, 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 a, mix, it's a mixed fight. It's for sure not as chill as jiu-jitsu and a lot more strategic and um, more of a chess match than just a straight up striking match in my opinion. I just want to say to everyone out there who has a dream or wants to succeed at something, all you got to do is work hard at it every day and just prepare because when preparation means opportunity, it's a beautiful thing. My name is Dylan D. Boy Massington. I am a black belt and I represent Rat Pack Fighting Systems and Finisher MMA. Um, my training really hasn't changed much at all since the COVID started. Maybe I actually have been training more because people are trying to get in one on one because uh, when it started, the COVID stuff, it uh, kept people from coming in. So actually, I probably got more one-on-one -on -one training which I enjoy more than uh, the group training so it actually probably helped me out. I got started in martial arts by my parents thought I was anti-social so they told me I had to do a, a school sport and I uh, thought wrestling was like WWE so I chose that and then I found out it wasn't WWE so uh, they made me stick into it because they said I had to do a social activity or some sort of um, social aspect to my life needed to be added so I kept doing that I eventually went and did karate and then my dad started jiu-jitsu because he saw the wrestling karate and got into uh, MMA in the UFC at the time so he used to take me to his jiu-jitsu gym where I, if I wanted to play with the other kids and climb on the equipment I had to uh, take class so he tricked me into doing the classes and then from there I was already doing all three aspects of MMA so then I just stuck with it uh, eventually stopped doing karate, uh, graduated high school so I don't wrestle anymore and now I just do the Jiu Jitsu. And so it's been 21 years and I have over almost 500 uh, competition matches. I have around 276 wins, 180 losses and a few draws. Uh, with that amount of matches, like that's my most uh, prized accomplishment. Like there's people who won bigger things than I have but to say that I face from people like Gordon Ryan to John Calstein to Damian Anderson to all these big names, like the wins don't matter as much to me. I have won a few things. I uh, won fight our submission of the night at Fight to Win. I'm undefeated at Fight to Win. I have wins in the finisher sub only uh, pro grappling shows. Uh, I have over 14 or 15 championship belts. But like I said, uh, most of my accomplishments that I'm proud of or is who I faced. I have gone from weight classes 115 all the way to absolute and faced guys at 325 pounds. I have done a lot of EBI rule tournaments. Uh, I've won a few, lost a few. I've gone to overtime a handful of times. And I do have one combat jiu-jitsu match. Uh, it wasn't for Eddie or the uh, CJJ Worlds or anything. It was on an MMA card and that went to a draw. It was uh, based on MMA scoring and it was, uh, it was a fun match. And uh, I, that's why I want to do this is to experience it one more time, getting to throw strikes and everything and hopefully pick up uh, a win or two. I would describe my style of jiu-jitsu as like a weird paradox. Like half the stuff I do shouldn't work. I'm like fast, but at the same time slow. I'm like stiff, but at the same time I can flow. I usually just adapt to whatever my opponent wants to do. If we go, if he's a leg locker and he wants to go leg locks, that's what I'm gonna do. If he wants to strike, then I'm gonna go out there and strike. If he wants to play points, I'll play points. I usually just adapt to whatever they're doing. 
and and usually the stuff that I try to do shouldn't work and looks completely wrong or just looks awkward, but it usually works out for me in the end and, and most people can't replicate what I do because it's just my own personal style. I did train MMA for a while, so I have experience getting hit. I knew how different it was. So I really wanted to go out there and see which of the Jiu Jitsu guys actually could take hits and the Jiu Jitsu translate. Uh, more so interested in that than actually myself. Like I, I pretty much know what my abilities and uh, what I can do and, and how I can take the shots. I want to see how these other guys who talk like they're MMA fighters, UFC champions, but actually only do Jiu Jitsu, see how they really react to everything. I probably won't go to overtime. My goal is to either get knocked out, get a knockout, uh, get submitted or submit. Like I want to be finished or get a finish. I want the ref either stepping over me and waving his hands and I want that experience of being knocked out and being like, oh shit, that, that was rough. Or the experience of hitting someone and the ref knocking me over to stop it. I, I can do grappling whenever I want, probably for the next 30 something years if I really wanted to. So I'm not here to really go out there and grapple. I'm here to try the strikes, get hit, and see what submissions I can pull off while that's happening. I try to compete every three months at least. I have a lot of fun competing and it's my favorite thing to do. I've won multiple world championships. I've been to a lot of tournaments in my life and I want to continue to get better every time I compete. Not only did I compete in the first combat jiu-jitsu against Wagner Roca, but I've competed in different shows as well as local shows here in Montana and Gracie Worlds. My first world championship was Gracie Worlds when I was a world belt. I competed at 170 pounds and I fought the black belt division. Getting ready for a tournament and getting ready for one specific match is only slightly different. I get ready to fight anyone I come in contact with. So regardless of whether I have to fight one person or whether I have to fight multiple people in a bracket is the same. The difference with the tournament is that when I'm fighting in a tournament, I have to be prepared for everything and everyone that's gonna come after me. So I have to have different looks and different styles ready. Most recently, I felt best at competing at 170 pounds, but getting stronger, getting more efficient cutting weight, I'm very excited to compete 145 pounds as I feel like right now, that's my right weight class. My mindset stepping on the mat is self-defense oriented because that's what my gym is. So every time I step on the mat, I'm coming out to use my best abilities, use the best techniques possible, regardless of the opponent. Whether it's an MMA fight, a jiu-jitsu fight, a kickboxing match, regardless of what it is, if I'm on the bottom, I need to control hands and control strikes. If I'm on top, I need to be posturing, self-defense oriented, and be ready to strike, control, and submit. I don't feel like the palm strike changed my game at all. Because I compete in MMA, and because I've been competing in MMA and focused on self-defense, I have to control the hands and protect myself. That being said, it makes it easy for me to transfer to this type of tournament and do what I do best. I was very excited to see what happens with all the jiu-jitsu guys coming into combat jiu-jitsu and all the grapplers coming into combat jiu-jitsu that don't have any striking base because they're not used to the damage it takes from strikes and the actual real world techniques that you have to use to control hands and protect yourself while you're grappling. I'm very excited to compete again. I've competed in the first one and I've competed against the best. So I don't think anybody's gonna surprise me with anything they have to offer. You've seen me compete before. You know I come out with fireworks every time. Expect something exciting and expect me to come home with that title. I'm absolutely honored to compete in this bracket and I'm excited for the invite. Thank you guys again and I hope you're ready to see what I have to offer.
My name is Tyson Lynn. I'm a purple belt and I represent C3. I work full time um, at an RV dealership. It's family owned. Uh, worked there for the last couple of years now and uh, I train when I get home, basically two hours a night. I'm pretty much to a normal schedule now. Um, basically like five to seven every night, come in the gym and work out and spar, do whatever. I got started in, originally in martial arts uh, when I was like four or five years old, doing Taekwondo. Um, but then uh, made a transition to MMA around like 23, 24. And then um, once you start doing the MMA, you have to learn jujitsu. So, uh, you know, started training around then. Um, yeah, so. Starting in Taekwondo, I placed third in nationals um, when I was a junior. And then in Jiu Jitsu, I don't have a ton of accomplishments. Um, I, I've won a couple of fight to win uh, exhibition matches. Um, and then in, in MMA, I've uh, had an 11 and one record as an amateur and I have an 85 record as a pro. I haven't competed in this real set yet, but I'm super excited too. I think I go with the mindset of um, giving each and every match everything I have because um, you pretty much have to go balls out in the beginning. <laughs> I'm not going to cut any weight basically for this, uh, for the featherweight tournament, but, uh, but yeah, I feel like I could still compete with any of these guys. I try to focus on making my skills better, you know, whether it's jujitsu, striking, uh, wrestling, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you gotta go in with the mentality that you wanna be the best at it, so that's what I try to do. I'm definitely heavy guard player, but I also am pretty proficient in punching and palm strikes are just another form of that. So I'm excited to get in there and be able to uh, strike while, while grappling. I think it's a really cool, unique uh, rule set. Um, not, you know, obviously there's nothing else really like it. So, uh, you know, props to Eddie Bravo for creating something new and I'm super excited. Man, when I, when uh, Eddie Bravo actually messaged me and it was the coolest thing ever. So uh, yeah, dude, I'm super pumped. Um, you know, it's a big event and I'm super excited to compete in it. I, don't know, I got a lot of grit and I've been doing this shit my whole life. So I'm just excited to, uh, to show everyone uh, what years of training can do. I got a lot of different things I'm good at. So uh, if not submissions, you know, a technical knockout would be pretty badass too. This show could be the start of something big, something huge, a new trend. UFC fighters, legends, champions versus the best in sub only, meeting in the middle combat jiu-jitsu.